Betty Zane's famous gunpowder run it was one of those defining events in, in the Western theater of the American Revolution. When I mean defining event, when people think of the Wild West, they think of uh, the OK Corral and they think of Custer's Last Stand. When you think of the war in the East, Betty Zane is to many folks is the first name that comes to mind in her famous gunpowder run. The Zane family is very important to the early history of the Upper High Valley. And she is rightly famous because she is a female uh, important person in terms of winning the frontier, what Roosevelt would have called winning the West uh, for European settlers. And her little run for powder may be a small event, but in the minds of those people who were living in this area, it's a pretty big deal. As a historian, it would be my belief that there are certainly enough primary and secondary, good secondary sources to certainly believe there's a high probability this event happened. There are also some individual letters too. Uh, one of them, of course, published later was by her own youngest son, who related how his mother had told the account many, many times of uh, life on the frontier. I have read most of the 19th century accounts about the battles that took place at uh, first Fort Henry, second Fort Henry. I have read the accounts of most of the frontiersmen. I haven't seen anything that would suggest to me that Betty Zane was not uh, the, the person who was really responsible for this. The first published account of her was uh, in 1802 in a small little newspaper out of Chillicothe, Ohio called the Scioto Gazette. After that, in 1831, uh, Withers published his book, and he actually had some uh, get, adding credibility to it. Withers was here. He was able to interview a lot of people who were uh, still alive that had been present at the siege. And he also supposedly had access to, uh, I believe, it was Ebenezer Zane's personal papers. But if you look back at all of those histories and all of the oral traditions and the references that you'll find you know, a sentence here, a sentence there in somebody's letter. Overwhelmingly, the person who is mentioned is Betty Zane. Lots of history is written without having direct documentation because either you're dealing with illiterate societies or you're dealing with people who didn't think what they were doing was significant because it was uh, an everyday thing of, um, self-preservation. But when the early historians, people who would have had the ability to talk to people who were there, when they're so sure that it happened, when you read the, the Chronicles of Border Warfare and you see in, in those pages that he's convinced that that happened. All these sources line up. Again, each one tends to verify just what the other said and actually to most people who've studied this seriously, there's never been any doubt that this occurred. Having read the 19th century accounts, having read uh, some of the manuscripts that exist, uh, I have seen enough evidence that convinces me that Betty Zane is the person to whom credit should be given for the powder run. And again, in the 1930s, she was probably stood, I would say, third in the pantheon of American myth, just behind Davy Crockett and Daniel Boone as to what she represented to the, uh, the American psyche. Her legend deserves to be remembered, it deserves to be examined, and that was the purpose of this documentary.